Today's lesson is how to multiply with area models. Fourth grade review, part two. You'll notice that on part one, we called it an array, and now we're calling it the area model. That's because as we learned in part one, an array is actually using all those squares or all those counter pieces to represent the exact number across both the top and the side. But area model really is a more accurate term for what we are doing. In part one of our review on our other assignment, we did using the area model showing how to do a two digit number times a one digit number. Well, today's review is gonna be with numbers that have more digits. For example, and write this down in your notes, 27 times 34. I think we can both agree that 27 and 34 are not exactly friendly numbers, but can we break these down into factors of tens and ones that are more friendly? Absolutely. So the 27 here can be broken down into 20 plus seven, and the 34 right here can be broken down into 30 plus four. And we can use the area model to show how to multiply. So first we need to draw our area. 27 and 34, well 34 is more than 27 so I should make that my longer side, but it doesn't have to be that much longer. And 27. So I'm thinking that this side is going to be the 34 and this side is going to be the 27. So this model shows 34 times 27. Length times width. But like we said, these aren't very friendly numbers. So let's use how we broke up those two factors into tens and ones. Like we said before, that 27 can be broken into 20 plus seven. And the 34 can be broken into 30 plus four. And now we can draw our lines to make boxes for each of those four areas. But remember, 20 is greater than seven, so that should be a bigger box up here. So we need to draw our lines accurately, or at least pretty accurately. Now we have our four boxes for our four, what are those called? Partial products. And now we can do some multiplying. The great thing is that we can cheat with zeros because we know that multiplication pattern. So in this box right here, we're multiplying 20 times 30. But don't freak out. You can do this. 2 times 3 is 6. And then how many zeros do we need to place? Well, here's one zero. There's another zero. So that box represents 600. Now we can move to another box, and you can work in any order that you want, but I'll move down here. This means seven times 30, because it's where these two numbers would meet in that box. So seven times three, I know that's my fast fact, is 21. And am I working with any powers of 10? Yeah, I'm working with one power of 10, or one zero. So I need to place one zero. Now I can move over to another box. It looks like this box comes from four times 20. So I can do my fast fact and cheat with zeros. Two times four is eight. And do we have any powers of 10? Yep, we've got a zero right there. That means place one zero. So however many zeros we've got in our two factors that we're multiplying, that's how many we're gonna put there. I've got one box left and it looks like that comes from the four times the seven. Fast fact, four times seven is 28. 
Do we have any powers of 10, any zeros to place? No, not this time. Okay, so now we have four boxes to put together. Now from my experience, and I don't know what it is, it's so weird, with fifth graders, my fifth graders seem to do all of this, all of this complicated stuff correctly. And you know where they mess up? Adding. Yeah, adding. Can you believe it? But it's because our minds have been so turned on and, and really working hard. And then we get to the adding and we think, oh, that's easy. I can do that. And then we stop thinking and we make really, really silly mistakes. So we need to have a way to track our thinking of our partial products. So check this out. All right, guys, I know what it's like to have a teacher saying, this is great, you can do this problem basically in your head with mental math and all these friendly numbers. And then we turn right around and we say, show your work, show your work. I can't crawl into your head and see what you did. And you're like, well, come on, you just told me it's mental math. Well, yeah, you can do it in your head, but I need to see the steps that your brain is taking. And by jotting down your thinking, you're probably gonna be less likely to make those brain fart adding mistakes. So check it out, it's a really cool way. You can use a whole nother math language and it's called arrow language. Arrow language uses arrows to represent the steps that you're taking when you're adding things together. So let's start with one of our Greater numbers, usually I like to take care of those first and then put on the lesser numbers. 600. 600 seems like a great place to start. Be sure to write this in your notes. So I've started with 600. And what I can do is I can just neatly draw a diagonal line through that box. I don't wanna like scribble it out and get all crazy because then I can't tell what I had there if I have to go back because I messed up. So just one little line will do just fine. <laughs> so now I look at the three other partial products that I have left and I think, you know, I, I wanna add on this 210. So with my arrow language, I can say plus 210. Remember, the arrows represent the steps that we're taking. I'm really trying to get that zero right. There it is. And that can be mental math. 600 plus 200 is 800, and then I have 10. So now I've got 810. And I'm done with that box. I've got two choices left. I could add the 80 or the 28. I'm thinking 80 is a friendlier number. So I'll go ahead and write that as my next step, plus 80. 810 plus 80 is 890. And now I can cross out that box. This also keeps track of which numbers you've added and which numbers you have yet to add for your partial products. And it looks like I've got 28 left. So plus 28. That's gonna bring me, ooh, I'm gonna spill over into the next hundreds. So it's gonna to have to be 918. Final answer. And that's my last box. So 918. And that's using that arrow language to show your thinking, to show what you did first, second, third, fourth, and using the cross out method to keep track of which partial products you've already done in your head or with the arrow language. So this is probably the quickest way to show your work and show your thinking since I can't crawl into your head and see what you did first, what you did second, blah, blah, blah. This helps me see where each one of those partial products came from and how you got your answer. And I can also see if you make a mistake somewhere along the way, I can see, oh, you did everything right except for right there with that one step. We can use that area model 
to multiply a three-digit number by a two-digit number as well. It just means we're going to have more boxes. Can you predict how many boxes we'll have in our area model? Okay, first things first, we need to break this down. We need to decompose this. So we know how to decompose a two-digit number into tens and ones. That would be 30 plus 9. What about a three-digit number? We need to look at the value of every place. So that 8 isn't really an 8. It's an 800. And the 5 isn't really a 5, but it's a 50. And the 2, yeah, it's just a 2. <laughs> so we have 800 plus 50 plus 2 times 30 plus 9. Okay, let's put it in the model. I'll draw a rectangle, a rectangle that is vertically oriented here. What do you think this long side is going to be? Yeah, that's going to be the 852. And the shorter side, that's going to be 39. And now we can show where we broke it up. There's my 800 plus 50 plus 2. And there's the 30 plus 9. Now what we need to do is we need to draw our boxes. And this is obviously not to scale. But if I had put it to scale, that two box would be so tiny we wouldn't be able to write in it. But let's be sure that the 800 box is quite a bit taller than the 50 box, which is also taller than the two box. Try to be accurate with it, but we do have to be able to read what we've written in those little boxes. Okay, now it's time to start multiplying those factors. So here in this box, it looks like this box comes from 800 times 30. Eww, so many zeros. Well, don't let that freak you out. Just do your fast fact and then place your zeros. Fast fact, 8 times 3 is 24. Do we have any powers of 10, any zeros in our factors? Yes, we do. 1, 2, 3. So, 1, 2, 3. What kind of punctuation's missing? Yeah, comma. 24,000. Can you complete the rest on your own? See if you can. Hit pause, and when you're finished, hit play again to check your answers with me. Press pause now. Okay, here are the remaining partial products. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 powers of 10, which means placing two zeros. 2 times 3 is 6. There's one power of 10 in the 30, so place a zero. I had to go sideways for that one. 800 times 9. Well, 8 times 9 is 72. I had two zeros in the factor, meaning two powers of 10, or two zeros to place at the end for cheating with zeros. 50 times 9, well, 5 times 9 is 45. There's one power of 10 in the factors, so I place one zero to represent one power of 10. And the very last box, 2 times 9 is 18. Now at this point, we can see why we need to have some sort of a method or a process for keeping track of all of these, what are these called again? Partial products. That's where the cross out method and the error language can be extremely helpful. So I always like to start with the biggest chunk or the greatest number because then I'm taking care of quite a bit right at the beginning. So I think I'll start with 24,000. The next greatest number is right here, 7,200. So before I go on to that, I'm going to cross out the box that I've done. And now I'll use an arrow to show adding 7,200. And I'll cross out that box. 
Now I've got to do some mental math here. I've got some thousands that are going to spill over into the ten thousands. I know I'm going to have 200 left over because there's nothing else in the hundreds place. So now I'm looking at 24,000 plus 7,000 would be 31,000. So 31,200. Okay, let's see. Oh, it looks like this partial product is quite a large chunk. So I'll wrap my arrow around and add 1,500. So I add my 10,000s, it's going to stay a 3. My 1,000s, 1,000 plus 1,000 is 2,000. There's where my comma goes. And then my 100s, I've got 200 plus 500 is 700. Excellent. I have three more partial products to get in there. I think I want to take care of the ones that are in the hundreds before moving on to the tens and ones. So I want to add 450. So it looks like I'm going to have 50 in the tens and ones, but I can tell already, I can tell that this 400 and the 700 are going to spill over into the thousands place because that would be 1100. So there will be a one in the hundreds place and there's going to be another one that spills over into the thousands making the thousands place a three and that ten thousands place still stays a three. I've got two more partial products to put together. Maybe I'll do the 60 first. It's a friendly number. Plus 60. 33,000. Oh, my tens are going to spill over into the hundreds. I can think of it as 15 tens plus 6 tens would be 21 tens or 210. Only one more to go. Right here, that 18. Let's tack it on the end. Plus 18. Nothing's going to change in the thousands period. Nothing's going to change in the hundreds. The tens are going to change though. I'm going to have two tens and now I finally have some ones. So we have that final answer, which we should box up, 33,228. So our first step was breaking apart our two factors. Second step was drawing the array in the boxes. Third step was multiplying and cheating with zeros to find our six partial products. And the fourth step was adding each of them up using arrow language so we can trace your thoughts. Hopefully that was a great review of methods that you already learned in fourth grade. I think the arrow language might be a new idea for you guys for fifth grade. But here's your task. You're going to love it. Create a three-digit times two-digit problem for a classmate to solve. Be sure that you know the answer, too, so that way if the classmate gets it wrong, you can figure out where they went wrong. So you need to solve the problem using the array or area model, using arrow language, so you can see if your friend's area model matches your area model tomorrow. Enjoy!